Hey guys, we got a special bonus episode tonight. It's uh, me and my buddy Jamie. He is a civil rights attorney and Trump hater. Um, talked to him a little bit about Supreme Court stuff going on. Talked a little bit about his hatred for Trump. Talked a little bit about the problems with the world in general right now. And we hope you enjoy. Stick around. Yeah, we'll we'll come back to Trump later. He'll be he'll he'll he's easy. We can go down there. Anyway. It's because me, not the lawyer, and I always ask you lawyer questions, and we always try to clarify whether this is billable hours or not. But um, so the big one, there was two this week, right? There was the um, LGBTQ, or I guess it's trans falls under Civil Rights Act now. If I am I yeah, understanding that right? It's under right under Title Seven Civil Rights Act. That's the one I'm familiar with. The other one on immigration, that's a little outside. Uh, right, outside it was a, it was on some of the DACA stuff that Trump's trying to deport kids that have been here their entire life, kind of thing. Correct. That's okay. my understanding of it. I've not read it. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know the history of what DACA is and how it works to know what the change would be either. So it's not something I'm particularly comfortable talking about. I am comfortable talking about a lot of things I don't know, which is where we're going to get into the <laughs> civil rights part of things. So as as long as we've known each other, I've probably leaned libertarian anyway, and I've gotten a little harder into it the more I've kind of dug. Um, if I recall correctly, you told me you voted for Gary Johnson last time. If you don't want to answer that, you're welcome to not. But Last election. Oh, no, no, I'm I'm happy to answer and and happy to say no. I did not vote for the buffoon in the White House. Okay. Or the buffoon who didn't make the White House. So you are absolutely correct. Okay, and so, um, in some of your Facebook stuff that I've gotten to kind of soft arguments through Facebook, because I try not to, just because I know there's going to be somebody else that doesn't know me, that knows you, that's going to chime in, and then it gets into this weird like. It's a kind of like I don't know. That's why I suck at Facebook comment things because I always end up treating them more conversationally than they are. I don't think about other audience. I think about the person who did the post and I'm just talking to that person. That's how I think. And I think a lot of people that don't know me don't know that I know you and I'm just some asshole talking shit, which well, isn't you know, untrue. You're, you're very specific. Asshole right. Talking. And so I get really defensive about some person I don't know. Cause I think they're some <laughs> asshole talking shit to me and I'm the same thing that I'm afraid of. But, um, the, so to to finish the libertarian little rant is that I've gotten more into it. I got a, I, I will admit I got into Gary Johnson mostly because the Hillary Trump A or B both suck balls. And so I started opening up to the idea of I've heard third parties before. I've heard about them, you know, uh, Rand Paul back in the day. And then you had uh, uh, sure. Nader and all those other guys through when we were pre before we were allowed to vote. But I remember hearing third parties. Don't get Ross Perot. Don't leave out Ross. There you go. And so I kept. So I started looking into it a little bit more, and so I'm on that train again this time. Joe Jorgensen is my candidate as of right now, um, but just as much to me to try to get the third party a seat at the table long term. I don't, I don't know that, I don't know that a libertarian, the libertarian stance is palatable enough to the public for it to really, without a lot, without a significant amount of time for people to get used to it, because I could see how a lot of people get a little weirded out by some of the libertarian stuff. But I just want to. I would love to see Joe Jorgensen. Have you have you seen her anything about her? Have not. No, okay. I'm pretty to the Libertarian candidate this time around, um, for various reasons that you and I have discussed and not well, discussed. But no, I'm not terribly familiar. Well, Gary Johnson was a in in hindsight wasn't a great candidate. So correct. I would have preferred Bill Weld. Ooh, okay. Um, I won't go into that either. <laughs> I we'll said, leave. I said I said preferred. Well, I mean, Bill. I mean, if if you really if. If uh, incumbency wasn't an automatic bid, he was he was technically running against Trump in the Republican primary. Correct. As a Republican. Correct. Which is why most libertarians don't like him because he's always been really a Republican. Right. But um, that's, that's preferred, and that's preferred. <laughs> okay, so one of the big things in libertarianism that I understand how a lot of people got react to negatively is one of the libertarian values, as I understand it, is the right to discriminate, and I get on board with that for the most part. When it gets into governmental issues, that's a separate question. I don't believe the government has a right to discriminate against the public because the government is supposed to be the, the answer to the public. So if you take governmental entities out of the conversation, I'm on board with the right to discriminate as an employer or as an individual. Barring that it is not a, like, I, you can't go out and punch somebody because I can't go out and punch, uh, Well, uh, since we're on topic as far as the... Um, this Supreme Court hearing or the Supreme Court decision, I can't just go punch a trans person because they're trans. That's assault, period. It doesn't matter why sure. I punched them. It doesn't matter that they're trans or not. And that's how I think the legal system should be. But more importantly, I think that's how 
the world should be to an individual. I have the, I feel comfortable saying I have the right to discriminate in my personal life. I'm, I, I, I always use this as my example. I have a thing for redheads. I married a redhead. You know, <laughs> that's true. You know, and like, is that is that discriminatory? Absolutely, by definition. I, I, what, what, but not illegal. But what, not illegal. What tweaks my buttons is redheads. So, my, I mean, I haven't exclusively dated redheads, so I guess I've, I have a track record of being a little bit more uh, open-minded than my feature. But anyway, so <laughs> that's where I get a little bit iffy on this Supreme Court hearing, and again, not being the legal-minded version of it, and again, as an employer. Why can't I? Like, well, I don't. That's this is where I get caught up on it. And again, keeping in mind my libertarian viewpoint, and you know, you you know me as a business owner as well as a friend. I don't understand why the Supreme Court has to jump in on my personal and or business decisions. Well, the Supreme Court didn't start. I mean, what started was Congress in 1964, <clears throat> and that's when, as you and I were talking about a bit ago, that's when the the Civil Rights Act was originally passed where you couldn't discriminate on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, or national origin, whatever that meant at the time when passed by Congress and signed by President Johnson. You know, and since that time, the Supreme Court has interpreted, if you will, what all of that means, uh, and it's interpreted quite a bit. So it, as far as why you can't discriminate, of course, it's because the statute exists the way it's been uh, the way that's been interpreted, but but the basis, is, as you may know, is for the statute's passage and constitutionality is interstate commerce. If if you do not touch interstate commerce as a business owner, which good luck, then right. you can't be regulated by Congress by federal law. You may be regulated by state law, which we do have. At least where you and I live, we have state anti-discrimination laws as well but but that's the basis for for the federal law it's sort of lowest level if you will okay so let me let me see if i follow correctly so if i mean all my customers are local but i guess my vendors are state to state so at the shop i could at least federally speaking i could legally exclude by trans for this conversation's sake if i wanted to as long uh, not not counting a state law that would jump in and fix that or as well, a, well let me rephrase that as an employer i could i could have an employee okay. come in and i know better because i know you and other people that have been through legal issues before i wouldn't say i'm not hiring you because you're trans i'm never going to say that out loud it's a dumb <laughs> dumbass thing to say i'm hiring you because you're not right for the job and they can interpret that how they need to but i didn't I didn't specify something that's discrimination by definition. Um, but for example's sake, if I did, is there a federal issue with that or that only go into state issue stuff? Well, it depends. If I recall correctly, at least at this point in time, you don't have 15 or more employees, correct? Correct. And you don't have eight or more employees, correct? Correct. Okay. So under federal law for Title Seven to apply and then by its by its nature then through the supreme court's recent ruling uh to protect uh gay lesbian and, and trans rights you would have to have 15 or more employees for that statute to uh to govern and you don't so technically speaking although i wouldn't certainly recommend it from okay. various reasons i wouldn't say that and then under state law since you don't have at least eight employees the tennessee human rights act which is very much akin in many ways to the, the Federal Civil Rights Act is also not going to apply. So you can pretty much do whatever you want to, whether it would be a for good now. Idea or not. We're 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 gonna yes. creep, we're gonna cross that eight threshold before too much longer. So, but I mean that's not okay. But I guess in the hypothetical that I was a bigger. So if I was 15, 25, let's say let's say like fifty five. If I have fifty five employees, but mm -hmm. everybody's in the state to see all all business operations take place here. The state law would apply, but the federal law wouldn't. Is that what I'm understanding correctly? In theory, that's true, but in in reality, it's not true because if you are purchasing product across state lines, if you you know, have a website, a Facebook page, which I know you have, which obviously that ends up crossing state lines, um, then you're engaging in what the Supreme Court views as interstate commerce. So no, the 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 act is going to apply to you. It it has to be so localized 
that it's nearly impossible with the Supreme Court's rulings through the years uh, on the interpretation of what interstate commerce is for an employer. So long as that employer meets the threshold for a number, number of employees, of employees. For, it to, for it to apply in a, in a practical sense, if you will. Okay. So, all right. So why, uh, I don't know. It's because, again, sticking to my libertarian view is what is... I just, so I don't. I, again, I'm, I'm not oppo- I, I, I'm not opposed to the idea. I think my my stance on it is a business stance on it. If I'm dumb enough to not hire somebody that's better at the job because of some discriminatable issue, if I'm not going to hire a black guy, even though he's better at the job because he's a black guy, I'm an idiot and I'm a terrible business owner. But I sure. feel like I, I have the right to be an idiot, don't I? I mean, is that? But not in this <laughs> particular case. Like that's that's my stance on it. You have a right to be stupid as an American, obviously. You have a right to be stupid, and if you want to make a stupid business decision and hire on the base of race and ha- instead of hiring on the base of skill, then you're an idiot, and you're going to pay for that long term in your business anyway. One would think, and, and really where it falls on that is, again, as the Supreme Court has construed the law through the years, Title Seven of the Civil Rights Act, is if you have what's referred to as a legitimate non-discriminatory reason for uh, an employment action, where that's failing to hire or terminating somebody, whatever the case may be, that's fine. You can do that if you if you have that. But the burden is initially going to be on you as the employer, uh, at least if the, the employee makes a very basic showing that, you know, under your hypothetical, I'm African-American, I work for an employer who had 15 employees and I was terminated. You know, that there's an inference if, you know, similarly situated Caucasians are, were not treated that way, there's going to, to arise an inference that the employer did it for a discriminatory reason. But then if, if the employer can come back and say, no, I've got a legitimate non-discriminatory reason right. for doing what I did, then it's going to go, you know, again, in your hypothetical, that the adverse employment was pretext for uh for illegal discrimination so you know again do you, per se are you as an employer going to be responsible if you make a decision based off of some non-discriminatory reason that looks discriminatory no you're not necessarily going to be liable for that but you're, you're certainly going to have some hurdles to jump through okay and then and again that's one of my problems with it as a business owner that i have to put forth extra effort like to me it it it, it it's not an issue per se because i haven't had to deal with it yet but to me it's one of those that I'm going to have to treat a discriminated uh, uh, a a person who is a protected class differently as an employee because of some of these issues. Because Tennessee is a right to work state. I don't keep like hard notes on anybody as far as like infractions for mistakes they've made. I fire people when it's time to fire somebody. It's it's a it's it's an internal thing. I don't have a, a log of of infractions or whatever you want to call it. And so what I'm hearing is if I were to ever hire a black guy or a trans person or one of these protected classes of citizens that I would need to do better at my own personnel accounting to protect myself from these classes. Well, whether, whether or not you, you hire someone who's in a protected category or not, my recommendation to you or any other employer in the state of Tennessee is if you have eight or more or, or outside the state, if you have 15 or more, then you certainly need to be keeping accurate personnel records of, you know, who applies, you know, obviously who, who works there, who was terminated. And if there are infractions, you need to, to write those folks up. You should have an employee handbook. Yeah, it certainly gets complicated. You know, the once you hit that threshold of eight or that threshold of 15, the, the world, the universe sort of changes. So absolutely, you should should do that if, if you meet those thresh, thresholds. Such a good lawyer answer. Um <clears throat> <laughs> well, if I if I if I wasn't any good at doing this, after doing this all I, just, I have, I probably should do something different. Again, and and I, I don't know. It's just like this isn't a personal thing to me. It's just it's a it's to me it's a it, it, it one like putting kid gloves on for certain people. I, I have a problem with. I think it's a weird premise in a quote free society that I have to treat that I have to that. I mean, I agree with you. If we get to the point, we it's something we've talked about needing to get better at as far as keeping up with. Uh, you know, issues, it's something we should do anyway, and that's fine. But the premise of being, you know, um, of having to be, of having to literally treat employees differently because of their protected class status and be more careful with them. I think that's a weird thing just on a, on a, on a, I guess a broader 
philosophical standpoint than just a straight legal standpoint. And that's where I get, that's where, again, on this one in particular, it's like, I don't understand. I don't understand an employer that would do it. I'm sure they're out there. There's shithole people. They exist. Um, yeah, that's why I've got a job. Do I? Yeah, I said, yeah, there's plenty. That's why I've got a job. <laughs> I just find it fascinating because like um, the, there was the other one um, that was trans related a few weeks prior. There was about some medical stuff, and there were some um, lawsuits pending from um, claims of me- of, of uh, trans persons not getting the medical care, the necessary medical care, and stuff like that, and it being a discriminatory practice thing. And I, I guess that's part of my problem is that I just cannot wrap my head around the idea, uh, especially the doctor's version of it, is that there is a doctor out there who is going to refuse to take care of somebody because of what they are, unless it's outside of their purview as a doctor that they don't have the knowledge or equipment to take care of a person for a particular need. But it's just weird to me. I don't like, I don't know, maybe it's a, a blind spot of mine, but um, I just don't. Well, I, well one, re- one issue there that I think would, would probably be pertinent is, and it comes up a lot is, if, if you are a, a relig- either a religious organization or you have a certain religious viewpoint or whatnot, and you, because of that religious viewpoint, look at someone who is different. So, you know, we're on the topic of, of transgender. If you look at that as somehow sinful and you don't want to take care of that person, provide them services, uh, uh, you know, for example, uh, the case from just a few years ago out of Colorado where the, uh, where the, the baker refused to make a, a cake for uh, a gay couple. So, Colorado, I thought that was know, Oregon. Is it Oregon? I was like, it was we've had this. We've had this conversation a bunch on the show because this is one where I side with the baker on. By rule, I decide the baker. It's stupid. It's stupid to be a baker that's not going to bake a cake when somebody wants to pay you for it. It's, it's, it's poor business <laughs> practice. But and, and as I said earlier, I feel like you you should have the right to be a dumbass in business. And if you're so dumbass <laughs> in business, and you know one of the things that. Um, Max, I'll explain who Max is here later, but um, one of the things that Max always does, he always looks on the social side of this conversation, the Baker conversation, because he, it's always, you flip it over, let's say, you know, I've got my white my white hood on, and I go into the Baker, and I say, hey, make me a sweet clan, clan cake, and they say no. Mm-hmm. And it's always like, well, how's that one different? Well, you're allowed to hate on white people and discriminate against white people. You're not allowed to discriminate against gays, trans, whatever our different discrimination versions are, and it's like... Or the other inverse version hypothetical that we put out is what if you're a Nazi baker and that's all you do is make Nazi cakes and somebody comes in and asks you to make a Star of David cake, you're like, fuck off. I don't make Star of David cakes. And that one the baker's going to lose because it's the public image of it or whatever. But if you're dumb enough to only make swastika cakes, you're not going to do good business anyway. And so it's it's to, be, to me, I, I again, <clears throat> it's a it's a... It's you. You should be free to be a dumbass, and if your dumbassery is going to discriminate against black people, trans people, gay people, whatever, you know, on a on a business level, at, at this stage of the way business works, I, I have a hard time feeling like you're the only game in town. Like it's not like it's the only bakery in town, and that's your only shot at getting the cake. It's it, it, that's where I get kind of caught up on it. It's not like it's not like you're stuck in a this is my only option, which is why I give the caveat from the get go that I don't believe the government should have the option to discriminate based on race, gender, age, any of the other stuff. Um, because that is the only option. If I have to go to the DMV, I have to go to the DMV. I don't have another DMV I get to go to if they're discriminating against me for some reason. They don't get the right to discriminate. But I'm okay with, I, I, I don't know. Is it illegal to be hateful? You know, should it be illegal to be hateful? Can we live in a world where that functions on a real level? Where we can tr- somehow try to legislate dumbass bias out of the system well there's certainly plenty of hate going on right now so i guess if if one is to support that view then i guess it's a roiling success i'm sorry i don't follow that one you're gonna have to try again i didn't understand that just talking about the dear leader and 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 the the amount of hate that is a spouse there that seems to you know permeate on an on an hourly basis if, if not more often than that by the the, the twit verse right as much but as much hate as he spews i feel like there's some there's some anti-orangeism out there that that really runs rampant in this country right now there's some anti i'm sorry what did you say orangeism I orangeism yeah i you couldn't have to explain that one to me i couldn't figure out a way just to make fun of his weird tan 
I, I, and I mean, he's not white, really. I mean, no, no, no. He's not no, even no. normal tan white. He's just orange. He's a man of color. What that <laughs> color is, I'm, I'm not sure it, it exists in nature. But right, and, and aren't right. we supposed to be? Aren't we supposed to be careful with people of color and not hate on them? <clears throat> Got me there. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I'm glad I don't employ him. Be- <laughs> I just, I mean, again, like I said, I just think I, I, it's a, I know it always comes off. Like, um, I know it always, it, it always sounds like a hateful kind of thing coming out, but it's not, it's just a, to me, I feel like it's, it's, it's a freedoms issue to me and that we're, we're kind of picking away at little freedoms here and there. And then it's going to come down to that. Like every single little subspecies has its own little set of rules and, 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 and laws and regulations and that we all have to chase down and keep up with all these little, little difference in isms. And if we're all people, then we should all be people. And some of those people are going to be dumb, and some of those people are going to be hateful, no matter how hard we try. What's the phrase? You can't legislate morality. That's true, but the government sure does try. Right, and how and, and how's that working out? Depends on the day. You know, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, hell, it's at this point, I guess, you know, it's. Uh, I had a, I don't remember exactly what it was, but I had a, uh, a joke about it as far as all this stupid cop stuff going on right now. It's basically like, if they. Uh, you know, if they outlawed racism, then, you know, cops get to shoot everybody. Didn't come out as good as my memory of it was, but the idea being, you know, I mean, we can't, it's not going to go away. We can't, we can't, le- we can't legally get it to go away. And I feel like the more, the, the more we fight it, the more little, the, the more little corners that these people are hiding in, the, the, the more angry they get at it. I think we're making worse racists. I won't say more, but I think we're making worse racists in the process. There are some, I, I certainly would not at all disagree with that, but I, I think really where it is, if there was a level playing field and, and people didn't have the hatred and, and the bias, et cetera, then, then these laws would, for one, wouldn't even be necessary. So, it, you know, you said something that was kind of interesting a few minutes ago. You said that, you know, if, if you have, and I'm paraphrasing, of course, if, if you have employees that fall into one of these protected categories and you're going to have to treat them differently when the the premise behind the law you know you can argue about you know its efficacy but the premise behind it is no it's so you treat everyone the same not that you treat you know one of the protected categories differently but but in practice you know I, I think what you said makes some sense because you you do in the context at least of an employer you may have to be somewhat more cautious you know when you've got folks that fall in one of those protected categories so it's 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 a bit of a double-edged sword i think yeah i mean i had to really like one of my favorite little stories on that is i had the a a guy that used to come into the old bar i used to work at and he was a manager at another bar down the street and um this cute little like 17 18 year old girl came and put in an application for a hostess or whatever and uh we were talking about it after like it was you know a couple days later we're Shooting, sitting around shooting the shit about it or whatever and he's like i'm not gonna hire her i was like why not it's like because she's gonna cause problems i could tell the way i could tell by the way it is she's gonna cause problems i think it was i think she was 17 which was part of the reason behind it he's like she's gonna cause problems she's underage um as much as she'd probably do just a fine job it's uh what's the word i want to look for here it's a it was a it was a headache he didn't want to want to take on by that particular person and it's like well isn't that backwards of how these things are supposed to work well, I mean, in, in that particular case, <clears throat> was it because she was female? Was it because she was underage, or because she was attractive, or I mean, what, or some combination thereof? Exactly. I mean, that's uh, the you know the the story. What like the the story as I recall it was basically it was the combination thereof. It was it was girl underage, attractive, um, you know, yeah, and and just like he was concerned about how it was going to go with the other employees there, the other girls that work there, the guys that work there the customers that he knew he had and how that interaction was going to go. And it wasn't, I mean, with the, with the other coworkers, there was probably a little bit of, uh, concern about them liking her too much. Um, and with the age part of it, at least. Right. But more like the catty little bullshit that he was afraid of that was going to come out of her. Cause he could just, I don't know, his, 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 his hot read on this girl was that, that she was going to be like catty and cause problems and stuff like that. And so in lieu of taking, but probably was a perfectly good employee for the job, he avoided it. Um, based on those, those things. Um, so the other one I want to talk to you about was like my favorite, my favorite little meme that you put up was that, uh, it was that cartoon of Biden and his pros and cons list. You know, and it, it had like a list of like seven cons and he had one pro. 
not Trump. Not Trump. And that's when I chimed in on you and said, at the time, um, it was Hornberger was leading the Libertarian. And now it's Joe Jorgensen. Because Joe Jorgensen fills the, the pros column for you. And in my opinion, has less of the cons column. I'm always curious. Like I, I find it fascinating right now that you don't hear much about. You haven't. I haven't heard much out of Biden at all recently, to be honest. But no one has. Yeah, but you haven't heard much about uh, the was it the ninety three ninety four crime bill that he authored. Yeah, it was, I can't remember which year it was, but it was somewhere in that that period. Yeah, and you don't hear a lot about that right now, considering the the the, the greater you know public affairs conversation that we have. Um, sure. and the, the issues with the police and stuff like that. And literally the author is running for president right now. I think we're in the same yeah. spot. I, I guess my point is like, you know, like we, like we said earlier, um, you know, you, in 2016, our options were shit and shitty. And I went, you know, I went libertarian, you went libertarian to oppose those things. I don't think we're, I don't think our, we're in a much better situation. Um, between the, the, the major party candidates. And again, like I said, my goal is to try to get that third party to have a real, at least a little bit of a foothold. So the general public gets to hear from them. I would love to see any libertarian, any solid libertarian on the stage between Biden and Trump in a, in a, in a debate. It would be hilarious. Oh, for sure. That would, that would be must see TV with, without a doubt. I mean, I, I mean, uh, Biden Trump on stage together is going to be must see TV for a whole other set of things. I'm looking forward. I'm going to try to watch the, uh, the rally tomorrow just to see how ridiculous <laughs> it gets. There's going to be plenty of dead people eventually, for yeah. sure. I mean, they're Republicans. They're going to die soon anyway. They're all old. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh, happy oh, Juneteenth, by the way. I think that I think we, I think okay. I meant to start off with that. I was thinking about it when we were talking about doing this. That I was going to start off with that because I feel like it should be a bigger deal than it is. I really do. I like, agree. I think it's. I mean, I, I, especially right now, this year of all years and everything going on right now. But I think, uh, I mean, you know, I think it's just one of those that. I, I remember last year seeing it in my calendar. It came up on my calendar automatically on my phone. I was like, what the fuck is Juneteenth? And I had to go look it up. Right. I, was like, I was like, oh, that's legit. Why aren't they making a big deal out of this? This is right. a big deal. I mean, it's it sucks that it was, what, like four days? Or was it four days or four weeks after the Civil War ended was Juneteenth? And it was a little bit, little bit longer than that because the Civil War ended in April of 1865. And it obviously was June the 19th of 1865. So, so yeah, there a couple of months. Yeah, and so like... But I mean, yeah, I think that's, uh, I don't know. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a cool story in the sense of the way the world was, as far as how slow things were versus now that part's kind of sure. neat. It sucks that there was, you know, a amount of time that there were more people enslaved longer than they legally were supposed to be. But, um, yeah, I think it should be a bigger holiday. I mean, I think it should be, you know, it's not a 4th of July, but it should be in the, it should be in the Memorial day, um, veterans day category of you know good fun summer and it's a summer holiday too i mean if you're yeah. in the middle of covid friday a friday especially this year it's a friday be out on the lake blowing shit up should Sounds be like a, a plan this man. should be a big deal holiday instead of i'm sitting in my basement talking to you drinking wine oh geez that's uh that's a that's that's a bad deal for you dude no uh, yeah i gotta <laughs> i'm gonna do it again tomorrow with three more guys and they, a couple of them will at least be here in person um but yeah anyway i was making fun of your I don't know. It's like I'm I'm trying to find any actual real pros for Biden, because um, one thing, especially about these two Supreme Court here or Supreme Court decisions that came down, it's clear to me that uh, that even if Trump does get another get does get reelected and does get another selection, apparently they're not listening to him anyway. They're not as hard line as what the quote Republican Party is supposed to be right now anyway, because there's been a bunch of Second Amendment stuff that came up and they refused to hear. And then they've had these two decisions that came out that both should have been a Republican strong Supreme Court side kind of deals. And these two went opposite of what they quote should have given what the, what the court is made of right now, if I'm understanding the composure correctly, composition. No, you're correct. And, and the fact that, again, I, I'm not terribly familiar with, with the DACA decision. I, I've not read it, but certainly in the, the, the Bostock case, that was nothing short of shocking that 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 Gorsuch um, was was in the six three majority I mean w when it comes to Chief Justice Roberts sometimes he can act as a swing vote uh, I mean not not terribly often but it happens but but for w one of the dear leaders nominees the one that should have been Merrick Garland 
to to go against you know all of the things that he was allegedly supposed to stand for and and have his own independent judicial philosophy was was somewhat astounding right and that's what and that's the thing to me that's a big deal in the 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 election com- part of the conversation is that if one of the things you were <clears throat> pro, not you personally but one of the things democrats were pro biden about just because biden's the democrat is that if he gets a, a nomination he's he gonna will. he's gonna swing back that's assuming he gets elected. I've already got one bet out. I'm not doing another one. I first bet was on here. I'm not doing another one. Um, assuming he gets elected and then gets to nominate, um, it doesn't seem like it's going to make that big a difference. So that being a, to me, that takes off as a pro or con for either Trump or Biden at this point, because apparently even if Trump gets another selection, they're not going to listen to him anyway. Or if Biden gets a selection, it's not going to swing the court that hard because the court's already kind of pushing left, regardless of Trump's selections in the first place. So it, to me, it takes the Supreme Court um, part of voting for president kind of out of the conversation. <clears throat> does that make sense? It 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 does, but I think I'm going to disagree with you on that because with with Gorsuch, just because you know we we've seen this decision come out where he was in the majority with the quote unquote liberal justices, I, I would say based off of his rulings and the past and being appointed to the Supreme court, I, I think that is the exception far more than, than the rule. Okay. And, and I think it would, you know, I think it's very clear that, that justice Ginsburg is not going to make it through another Four right. year term. <clears throat> I did see somebody discussing essentially that she should have probably done it. She probably should have got out while Obama was there. Well, <laughs> we saw how well that worked when uh, uh, when Justice Scalia passed away and and right in the Stalin the Stalin game right Moscow <laughs> Moscow bitch you know basically stole that Supreme Court seat unconstitutionally but you know that so, kind of is what it is. But I think in that that case I'm going to disagree with you. I think it it is. Supreme, supremely important to, to use a pun uh, in looking at who's going oh, yeah, to... I get it. Yeah, I get great. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll be here all night to your waitress. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, you know, I think it is, it, it's a major issue coming up, particularly for those who swing toward the, the liberal side uh, more so than, than the libertarian side, that you can't have a Justice Ginsburg being replaced by by justice kavanaugh that that would swing the court and harry carry to the right okay i mean that's just i mean i don't know like i i i this is this whole show for for lack of a better way to say it is this this whole show is my attempt to try to get better at understanding what's going on because to me i heard it on one of the other shows that i listened to it's like well you know you're not just voting for the president and i think most and like this guy says you know i think most people are voting for the cabinet and who they're going to nominate for the Supreme Court, and I'm like, I've never thought about that in voting for president in the past. Now that's my well, fa- that's I- my failure as a citizen, and it's also my failure in understanding why the system's the way it is. But, um, you know, well, here let, let, me give, let me give you even a little bit more food for thought on that. This is something that that I considered. I'm, I haven't seen much, if anything, about it in in the the mainstream media or even in you know the smaller media, probably because of my workload. I don't really read a whole lot, but in any event. You know, in <clears throat> I think we may be even voting, if, if particularly if you're one who's inclined to vote for Biden, who at least for me is one of those you know hold your nose and vote. Uh, I certainly in the, the the primary season was was no Biden fan, but he'll be I believe it's either 77 or 78 by the time if if he's elected he's inaugurated. So you're in many respects maybe even voting for a vice president. I agree. And I think this time more than, more than average. Cause that's, we talked about that um, in a prior podcast and it's like, you know, the, the general rule of thumb is as long as you don't put a bad VP on the, on the ticket, nobody cares. Correct. You know, and that's always the Palin conversation. It's like, well, you know, Palin comes out of nowhere and that whole campaign just hit the floor. And, you know, as long as it's just somebody kind of pardon the pun vanilla, um, Nobody really cares, <laughs> but I think this time around, you're right. Another I think, joke on Juneteenth. yeah, I think, uh, uh <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think you're right though. I think, eh, eh, I think the the, I think Biden's VP nominate nomination is going to be uh, more impactful than recent 
reason other than Palin, but for the other reason. Palin was a was a, was just tank that that campaign, but and I don't know. I mean, and who all the conversation is that Biden might take as his VP, um, you know, seems like at least what the mainstream media is talking about is it's it's a you know it's it's going to plug in some it's going to try to plug in some of the further left vote, try to bring the, the which I don't really understand that as a political move, but you know the Klobuchar's are one of those that's you know. Um, a little further left than Biden is, which makes it a little, well, a little more right. interesting to hey, me. Well, here, here, here is sort of a, a tongue in cheek conversation I was having with someone recently. And that was, you know, I, I think it would be only too fitting for Biden to choose Stacey Abrams uh, from Georgia. He kind of did, it. but didn't, did you see that video? Yeah. yeah you know, <laughs> not, not, and, you know, and, and so the, the tongue in cheek conversation I was having, I said, well, you know, it, I think it's almost a patriotic duty to select Stacey Abrams and then die in office. And that's, you know, how fitting would that be to, to have the, the biggest monster that has ever held the presidency to be bookended by two African-Americans? Yeah, I mean, I, God, that's a tough one, though, because mostly post that weird ass video or interview thing where. Biden brought her on, which really felt like he was going to say it. Like, I thought he was going to be like, oh, this is my, you know, I want to introduce you to right. my, my VP. And everybody was sitting there waiting for him to say it. And then he wandered off into conversation. And then she sat there. She <laughs> sat there on Biden screen. The conversation. <laughs> she sat there on screen the entire time, dead silent, didn't say a word through the whole thing. And then it ended. And everybody's <laughs> like, what just happened? <laughs> but I mean, but anyway, so that happened. And we started looking into it. And it's like, well, she's, she was a state senator. Or state rep for Georgia, she ran for governor yeah. and lost. Right, yeah. and well, arguably lost. Arguably lost, and and I've heard I've heard especially some right pundits being like, you know, it was like fifty thousand votes, but it was fifty thousand votes in the state of Georgia, which really percentage wise isn't that much. Um, and there was some col- polling place issues and different stuff like that, um, you know. But as far as actually holding a leadership role, she has it. Whether the last one got stole from her or not, beside the point. You know, that's a big jump. I mean, that's a bigger jump executively than the Palin jump. She's just not is as... It, is it a bigger jump from, you know, being just a, a talking loudmouth who's never accomplished anything other than, you know, taking his dad's money and pissing it all away? Hey, I'd do it if I had if my dad gave it to me, but... Um, I'd vote for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, one of, the things, one of the things to me, and we, we talked about this on one of the last episodes, it's like... Um, because, uh, AC on the show, he always argues that, uh, Hillary had the best resume in the history of presidential nominees. Debatable for some, yeah, I mean, debatable for some specifics. I'm sure you could argue George Washington or maybe Eisenhower with the military background or whatever. That's not the point. Um, but I mean, realistically with her, you know, with her resume, it's, it's, you know, as far as offices she held, things she'd done, um, in politics prior, it was pretty impressive, but, um, the conversation we had a couple of weeks ago was, well, what is, what is it? What would the resume be? If you wrote a resume, like if you were, if you wrote a checklist of what you want your president to have, um, whether it's experientially or, um, you know, or just demeanor, some of the other stuff, if, like, cause Sam, one of the other guys in the show, like his big thing was knowledge of civics, which I get that I'm down with that one. You should, you should understand how the government works if you're going to work there. Um, and then a calmer demeanor. And that was his two things. It's like, that's it. It's not, I mean, that's not a lot to go off of. And so me, the business mind guy is always like, you know, I like the idea of a guy who shows a track record of succeeding in managing people because the president's supposed to manage people and he's supposed to put good people in the jobs of all his cabinet positions and then manage those people and not micromanage because that's, you know, that's one of, I pat myself and that other guy on the back about how we let it go. You know, we got good people in place and we don't sit on top of them and question everything they do we let them do it and that to me that to me is a resume point so the question i keep asking different people is if you could write a resume for the perfect president and we'll see if we can find somebody that's names fits the resume what's on the resume well i think the problem right now is that the the bar has been set so low it's it's nearly impossible to limbo under i mean i i tend to agree number one for me on the list of uh, qualities for resume is just sane would be great. I mean, that would be, that would be a starting block. Yeah. I know something about government, uh, you know, perhaps three, just, you know, maybe, may, 
to be, you know, not be completely corrupt. You know, there's, there's, there's a few. Right. I mean, that's, I, I'm, but, yeah, okay. So those aren't, those aren't bad ones. Um, but where, but okay. All right. The corrupt one. All right. So another one we've had, um, is, uh, what are your thoughts on term limits? Obviously the president already's got them, but as far as congressional term limits. No, I personally am for them. And I don't think that, I, I just don't think that anybody should spend, you know, more than six or eight years in government. You know, there, there needs to be fresh blood. I, I mean, I think that senators should be one term limited to six years. I think that the Congress people, since they serve two year terms, let's say, let's say four terms, let's say eight years, the same as the president. Right. And they get some new blood in there. I mean, you know, let, let's look at, you know, one of the most entrenched Washington, you know, corrupt politicians, you know, Moscow bitch, you know, how long has he been there? You know, I know that he's got his hands full with Amy McGrath right now and good on you for her. Uh, but, you know, I think, I think he's a wonderful symptom of the problem. Yeah. I mean, he's not the only one, but for sure there's, I take issue with that as well, but my, I'm, <clears throat> I'm of the, the, the argumentative stance at least that, that's our responsibility as the citizenry. Like, how are we like you hear everybody talk about it. And obviously they would be the, this is one of uh, the other guys things is he always says, you know, they shouldn't be able to vote on things that affect themselves. They shouldn't be able to vote themselves raises. They shouldn't be able to, sure. you know, and they're never going to put a bill on the table that says, Hey, um, we're going to fire everybody in two years. You know, you can't come back in two years. Let's all sign off on that bill. Let's, let's sign our own firing bill. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Um, but at the same time, is that not our responsibility as the, as constituents to hold them to the fire? And if they don't do what they're, what they're supposed to be doing, we get them out of there. Yeah. I mean, it's certainly our duty as as, you know, civics minded people. But the problem with that is, as you know, is, you know, and I don't think I've made this any secret with you because I'm a very jaded individual is that is, I think most people are stupid. You know, they, they don't educate themselves. But they, is it illegal? They, most of them don't even, most don't vote. And those who do, a lot of them don't know anything. They right. Just, I know, agree. And, but, and again, that's one of the things on the show is like, um, we had Gina Oster on. I don't know if you, do you know who Gina Oster is? I do not. She no. is uh, running for district 18 state rep seat. Okay. Um, I don't know where, I don't know where your new house is, but, um, it's my, she's my, she, she's running for my rep seat. Um, okay. Good. Uh, so, I mean, your office, I, at least your office is in, is in her district. It's uh West Northwest Knoxville. Gotcha. Okay. But, um, you know, I'm trying to get Eddie Manis on, he's running against her in the primary. And then there's uh, Virginia couch who is running against whoever wins the primary on the Republican side of the ticket as the, as the Democrat, I'm trying to get all them on. I've got, um, Kyle Ward coming Monday. He's going to be, he's my, uh, County commissioner. Um, I'm trying this, that's, like I said, this whole thing to me is trying to get deeper into local politics. I think one of the biggest issues as a whole we have is all we care about is federal. And for you, I get how some of that makes sense because some of that federal stuff going on affects your job. But on a day to day, Kyle Ward and Gina Oster are going to have more effect on me and how my household works and what my kids are doing in school and stuff like that. than yeah, some sure. of my business stuff, some of my business stuff is affected on the federal level, obviously. Um, as the earlier part of the discussion goes, but, um, I'm trying really hard. That's that, like I said, the whole point of this to me is I'm trying really, really hard to get better at, at, at understanding and being in, being an informed voter. Cause we talk about it all the time. Like I've pulled up, you know, I pulled up sample ballots. Like last three times I voted, I've went and found a, the sample ballot beforehand to try to figure out who's on it. And then I go dig into like just what should be fairly easy on the internet to try to find out about some of these people. And the best you get like Gina Oster, before we had her on, I was trying to do a little bit of research on her. Um, she has her campaign website. She has her Facebook page. And there is a probably 600-word story from WVLT that she's running against Eddie Manis in the primary and Virginia Couch is running against them as the Democrat. That's all I can find on her. That's crazy. Uh, and, you know, and it, you know, it never ceases to amaze me that it, it is so difficult to learn you know, more about particular local candidates, because you're absolutely right. You know, most, most things day to day, those are going to be more affected by uh, our local, local elected folks. And, you know, most people, you know, unless it's just down ballot and they start clicking boxes because it's a D or D or an R. R. Yeah. And that's what right. most people do. That's how, and that's what I did. Do. I mean, I'm, I mean, that's what I used to do. It was just yeah. R. 
R R R R R, and that's because I thought I was a Republican. And the more and and one of the things I'm I'm trying to re-register. Um, I'm trying to remove the R from my registration as a voter. Um, and as far as I can understand, in the state of Tennessee, it's Democrat, Republican, or Independent. An independent gives you about nothing to vote for except for the full ticket. So I can't vote in any primaries. Um, so, you know, like this year it would have been like, well, if I was registered as an independent, could I vote in the Democratic primary? Because I wouldn't have wanted Biden out of that field. But I can't because I'm registered as an independent. But I don't want to register as a Democrat either because then, you know, conversation sake, Trump wins again next time around. Well, yeah, no, Trump loses. Biden wins, and then Biden's going for an incumbency if he if he survives. Um, and then the Republican primaries are coming around, and I can't uh, I can't vote for yeah. the Republican side of the primary. And like, and that's I don't, and I get both sides of it. I get why if you're a registered Democrat, you can't vote on the Republican primaries because you throw it the wrong way. You go vote for the biggest loser on the seat for the for the seat just to try to make it worse for the opponent. But as an independent voter, which is what I'm trying to be. I have less options. Like, you know, the, the old joke is uh, you're throwing away your vote and it's like, fine, I'm going to throw it away until somebody picks it up. I'm over, I'm, I'm over just doing what I'm supposed to at this, at that, at, at the ballot box, you know, cause the two. Uh, and I, and I was uh, 100% on board with you in 2016, uh, as you know, and we, we already discussed, but un- unfortunately or fortunately, I don't know how you want to phrase it, but, but the dear leader has turned me from a libertarian independent voter to a card carrying Democrat, just because I, I, I want to see every single Republican punished. Ouch. All right. Like I find it weird. Like I find it fascinating. Um, we've got a guy here that's running for our state Senate seat. I haven't tried to reach out to his office yet, but like his billboard is whatever his name is endorsed by Trump and it's like yep man if you can't run without him if, if, if that's gross I mean that 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 concerns me a lot I don't like that but again it's just a it's a it's a uh, I'm blanking out on a good smart sounding word but it's just a it's the muddy shit that is the game I mean it's the, the, yeah. the it's the shit that is the game yeah. right now and it's you know and I mean I you know like I I had hope for Trump I'm not gonna lie I had hope that he was going to go in there and blow it up in a fun way. And no, he just, he just played the same game. I mean, you know, I mean, there's, there's some things I don't hate about Trump and I would go so far as to say, I like about Trump. There's some Trump things I like, but you know, I mean, he turned, he, he somehow turned the cesspool grosser and I don't know how. Yeah, you... no, I, I, I like to say drain swamp refill with sewage, but he didn't even drain the swamp part. No, I mean, that's the thing to me. Yeah. I mean, that was the thing to me. It's like that, that honestly, that was his one sales pitch that I was on board with. Like I was all about that drain the swamp. I mean, he hit that rhetoric hard and it was great. And then he didn't do it, which I mean, that's not like everybody, every other politician doesn't play that same thing. Well, I mean, that's, that's partially true, but he's also a pathological liar. So he's a politician. If we're going to be fair. Yeah. He might be, yeah. he, he might be worse than, <laughs> he might be worse than the average bear, but he's still a bear. I mean, that's, he's that's, still, I'll give you that. You know, I I'll mean, that's, that. I'll give you that boo-boo. I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, I mean, that's like, to me, like I, I, I get where you're coming from, but at the same time, I don't quite understand, um, uh, the, what's jokingly referred to as the Trump's derangement syndrome. Like, I think part of, I think part of it is most of it, 98 and a half percent of it is all him and especially his fucking mouth. He runs his stupid ass mouth and just makes things that weren't that bad worse all the time. Um, but I mean, they're like the, and I don't fault you for this either, but like um, the premise and it, and it, again, it's not a new premise either. Um, but the idea that if they say it, it's bad. And especially particularly in this part of the conversation, if he says it, it's wrong or it's bad. And I think that mindset is a bigger issue that we as a nation have that, he is exacerbated, but was already there. Oh, for sure. I mean, the the the, the fact of the matter is, society over the course of the last maybe twenty years or so. I mean, I, I sort of think back to you know nineteen ninety four and the quote unquote Republican Revolution, or whatever they called it at that point in time, with with Newt, and that is you know 
society has descended into tribalism you know, right. to the point where you know not not only is the other side wrong but they're evil and and i'm guilty of that absolutely because you know i i see the fact that that the republican party allowed itself to be shanghaied you know by this guy and then now no one stands up to him and the closest you're going to get is you're going to see you know the the the, the corkers and the flakes of the world that just say i can't do this anymore and just quietly you know run yeah, away and what's hide. his uh what's his name from utah the one guy and then he's gotten just yeah Mitt Romney. yeah i just got you know? good just yeah, hammered the, for it the, and it's the, yeah the one guy so yeah again, so what about, what about everybody else you know if you you know perfect example marcia blackburn who i oh. can't <laughs> you know she is she's repulsive to the core um because she if he says jump she asks how high and you yeah. know that's that's it that that's her shtick yeah we often we, we often bring her name up and gag on on the show like whatever like because i get her newsletter i got it earlier today um you know, and, and then honestly, then, but she's gross. Don't get me wrong, but honestly, it's not a bad newsletter. I'm sure she doesn't write it herself. Um, like <laughs> a couple months, a couple months ago, I got it. And you know, it was a lot of, you know, do you own a small business? Here's a link to the SBA and the PPP loans that are going on. There's a lot of good information actually in the email, but yeah, her, yeah, she is, um, she is on the top of the list of, of just gross. And she happens to be one that we have to deal with and makes it even grosser. Well, and it's and it's really unfortunate too because she's the first female senator from the state of Tennessee. So, in, in most other circumstances, I would be all for it. See, but, but that's my problem. You know, Going back to the beginning, my problem is I don't care. I don't give a shit what's between <laughs> your legs. I don't give a fuck. Do the job. Do the job that you're supposed redhead, to do. Unless they're a redhead. Well, then it's especially well, and I don't know. Yeah, I'm not attracted to ginger dudes, but I've had a few ginger guy friends, and they're cool dudes. I got a ginger beard, at least I used to. I'm getting old and it's starting to get all gray, but um, you know, I mean, I don't like see that I, again. This go, that, to go back to the beginnings. I don't fucking care. I don't care what you do at home. I don't care who you do it with at home. I don't care what clothes you wear and what your name is. It doesn't matter to me. If, if you have a job and this is the job, do the job, the best the job can be done and move on. And yeah. the idea of legislating, and, and, and if, legislating corrections and, and, to and, that is not going to fix people that are too fixated on that being a problem. They're not going to change that through law. They're going to change that through, you know, I mean, on the trans issue to me, and this is because I was much less understanding of trans issues until I met one. And I'm actually related by law to, to, to my, my brother-in-law is now my sister-in-law and she is, he was great. And now she is great. And to understand on a much more personal level, I have much more respect for the, the, um, the courage it took to do it. And especially knowing the entirety of this family and some of the issues that she knew when she came out with this, with this declaration for lack of a better word, that it was going to be a problem for parts of this family. And as much as I didn't understand it at all before, she knew me well enough to know that it wasn't going to be a problem. And that, that was kind of, I pat myself on the back for that, even though I didn't understand that I knew that, but I don't think that, that the point being, I don't think law is going to fix that. I think interaction and becoming, bringing community back in the much more broad sense of community that we don't have anymore um, is, right. is going to do better than law. And I don't know how we fix that in, but the law doesn't fix that ever to me The really the law seems to me on, um, at least in my perspective, it, te- it seems to trench people further into their version of whatever it is. Well, and, and I think that an important takeaway from, from what you said is that, you know, and again, paraphrasing, if, if, if more people took the viewpoint, you're such a you damn did, lawyer, you can, you can misquote me. It's fine. <laughs> Jesus, um, you're on I'll, tape I'll anyway. <laughs> I'll, I'll misquote you with, with reckless abandon, but no. And, and if more people thought like you, and that is, I don't, I don't care whether you're a female senator. I don't care if you're a trans, you know, whatever, you know, great. But the fact of the matter is, you know, congrats, dude, you're in the minority. See, I don't um, know. That's again, that, to me, I would argue. And that's, again, that's another one of the kind of the, 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 the catalyst for the show is for us. It's like, I don't hear us. I don't hear us in the media. There's a few people out there. There's a few podcasters I listen to that I, that I do hear. I mean, I'm a big Rogan fan. I know I've, I've said it a thousand times on the show for those listening. I'm sorry. I'm going to talk about it more. Um, 
And he is the biggest That's podcast. Factor, yeah, and he's the biggest podcast on the planet. He like literally, he is the most powerful interviewer in the history of time. Set, set that aside. Um, but other than him and uh, some some of the like podcasts that, that revolve around him, which the numbers are there. Um, and that's kind of the idea is that your, your, our mainstream media paints the picture of these separate little groups a lot harder than I think the reality is. I think, I don't think I'm special. I don't think I'm, um, I, I, I don't think my mindset is wholly unique in the idea that I can, un- I can not understand something until I'm confronted with it and then deal with it as I'm confronted with it. I don't think that's, I don't think I'm special in that. I really don't. And I think there, I think there is a huge of the, what are we at? 300 and something million in America. I'm going to say right. for, you know, to, to misquote myself, cause I've said this phrase before, but, um, paraphrasing myself from a previous episode, probably, I would say that in the adult population, there's probably 65, 75% of the public are like me. They don't care. They, they just don't care. It's not a like or dislike. It's a not, it's a, it's a, it's a don't care. And I think that right now, especially as we're being told so hard that this is, and this isn't, and this is, and this isn't, and all these people that don't fit into whatever the media is telling them they are, or they aren't, are just lost. And that, to me, that's the whole point of the show is I think that we are way more average, which is a weird thing to say. And when I'm trying to broadcast to the world is that I am more average. I, I believe that I am more average than what the media tells me I am. And I believe there's way more people like me. I, I, I honestly hope you're right. I, and I certainly would hope that's true, at, at least in my experience, doing what I do every day and, and the, the phone calls I take and the, the emails, the inquiries that I get is no. I mean, m- many people do not think like you. Many people don't think at all. They, they have their prejudices. They have their... Um, their viewpoint and you know they they don't care. yeah but the people like me yeah. don't think you need to exist so they're not going to call you anyway <laughs> that's true but my phone doesn't stop ringing <laughs> i mean i don't know I, 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 I and i don't know how to test it like that's the thing to me is like there's i'd love to be smart enough to write a write a good survey that could get a good feel of how people actually are because i think i think a lot of people are, are it's it's gut reaction it's um you know, because it's like, for the past month, I've been trying to figure out if I'm racist or not. I thought I knew I wasn't racist, but I, I really don't know. Okay. I mean, like, it's just like, especially recently with the with the Floyd thing, and then with this one in Atlanta, which I'm really conflicted on. But you know, that's a separate that's conversation. Right. Um, that'll be on probably the entirety of the episode is me arguing with everybody else about that the the um, the Georgia shooting a couple of days ago, but um. You know, I don't think I, I like I can't, you know, I'm trying to figure out if like the, the, the white, if I'm the bad guy for the white silence or if I'm um, how like what, like I still don't quite understand what white privilege is. I'm sure I guess I have it if it's a real thing and I don't understand that part of things. And it's just like I get up in the morning, I go to work, I take care of my shit, I come home, you know, and I don't interact with the cops a lot. And that's a good thing. But um, we're going to get interrupted by my kids here in a second, but, um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I was just kind of in the middle of a rant there and I kind of got distracted. But, um, point being is I don't, uh, I don't know. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's just a hope. Maybe I hope that I'm not special. And maybe I hope that the majority of people are more rational like me than not. Um, and I get where you're coming from and, and the people that you are interacting with for most of your work, cause you don't have time to work for me anyway. But, <laughs> um, you know, that being said, I just, I just, um, you know, I just, I don't know. Like, I just don't, I can't, I can't as a business person see a business refusing customers on some stupid premise. Like, it's like, why? Like, especially now who's not desperate for money right now as a business owner, you know, I mean, how do you say no to a, just, just put two dudes on top of the cake and go on about your day and get cash the check. If their money's good, they're good. Who gives a shit? I can't understand how I don't, <laughs> there are plenty of people out there who do. Yeah, I mean, I just can't. I, I can't wrap my head around that. I, and even more so, I can't. I can wrap my head around the ideas like, and again, with the, if we're going back into that one. I can, I can, I can wrap my head, and I can accept the idea is that I don't want to do that. I don't want to. I don't want to do that thing that these people are asking me to do, and it's very specific to that what these people are asking me to do, and I don't want to do that. And I take issue with the law making me do something I don't want to do. I take issue with the law making me pay taxes. I do it. 
because I don't want to go to jail. Um, but you know, I take, I, I, I take issue with a, with a law stepping in and forcing somebody to do something. I like laws. I'm okay with laws that uh, some of them, I'm not okay with all of them. I'm okay with the idea of a law that, uh, that doesn't allow you to do something that says you cannot. And I think that's one of the things to me that, that I get lost in the discrimination stuff because discrimination makes it a positive instead of a negative or a negative. What do you, I don't know what the legal term is. You know what I'm talking about? Like, you cannot discriminate, which means, which I'm okay with a law that says you can't do something, but really what it's doing is it's saying you have to do. I, not I exactly, but I think it's a matter of perspective because it, I think someone who's like you, at least in theory, if you don't have inherent prejudices, you're going to hire the best person for the job, no matter, you know, black, white, Cuban, or Asian, you know, then, then you're not going to be discriminating. So no, it's not, that's not causing you. There's no, nothing affirmative there that, that you have to hire someone who falls into a protected category it's just you you have to do what you do and which is you make hiring decisions based off of you know qualifications okay and, so then the question is when is when does affirmative action come in as far as my employment situation it doesn't it doesn't anymore i don't see i never understood how that worked anyway i i, I i'm i'm woefully ignorant that i mean i know you know in certain college admissions it either was or maybe still is. I'm not certain, but but I'm not aware in, in doing this job for a long, long time that, you know, if, if you're an employer, you, you have to have a quota. You know, that's, yeah, I think there's even a Supreme Court case out there if I'm, you know, searching the cobwebs of my, my memory bank, which is, you know, an iceberg with, with fewer penguins every day. <laughs> and <laughs> get, you, get you a glass of bourbon and clear those penguins yeah, out. Yeah, it's, it's, it's global warming, man. But anyway, I think there's <laughs> I think there's even a case out there from years ago that said that no title seven does not require affirmative action. You don't have to hire a certain number of those in a protected category as an employer. All you have to do is, is treat the applicants and, and the current employees on, on an equal footing. Okay. Okay. Well, um, I don't know. We'll wrap up this part here and, um, went way longer than I anticipated. I was planning on doing like a 15 minute or cause it was what I was planning on doing is I was going to cut this into the, into the show tomorrow and let the guys make fun of me for asking stupid questions. Cause that's mostly what they do. Um, but this went long enough that it's going to be a standalone bonus episode. I'll have it out tomorrow. If you want to listen to it, tell your friends about it. Um, this is almost an agreement. Uh, we, we thank the, the, the honorable James for coming in and, and educating us. I'm going to put a pin and, and get you back on the show at some point. Um, because I think we're going to do a civics class. Like we've talked about doing some civics class because we've all argued about how little we understand how the Supreme Court works. And we need somebody to help us out in, in explaining that to us. So I want to put a pin in getting you back on the show in the future so that you can, I'll, I'll give you some time to prep, but so that you can, like so you, you can sit down and you can give us a, a, a full explanation of like how it's supposed to work. Cause the schoolhouse rock song is not helping <laughs> me understand it. It's on Disney plus we are not sponsored by them, but I saw it on there. And, uh, I started watching, uh, I watched the, 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 how the federal government works thing to try to better understand. Cause we literally had that conversation and five minutes later I found it and I was like, I still don't understand. And this was to be explained to five-year-olds. So that's where I'm at. Well, but you bring the bourbon, I'll do the best I can to be entertaining. All right. Yeah. We'll have to, you'll have, once we're safe to go mask free, we'll have to get, uh, um, get you in here in, in, in my basement we'll call it a studio, but whatever. But um, we appreciate you coming on. I'm going to shut this down, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks.